there, there. Hey photographers, Nikon has released their own lookup tables, which some call LUTs, to improve our use of N-Log in the Z-series cameras. Uh, these files, used in conjunction with a video editor like Final Cut, Premiere, or Resolve, color correct N-Log recordings for display to a screen. That's usually the starting point to create a color grade of the footage for the final creative look. N-Log, like the log settings provided by other manufacturers, creates expanded dynamic range video recordings that need to be adjusted for a display. Nikon's N-Log lookup tables are camera LUTs to make those adjustments. They convert the high dynamic range log recordings, which otherwise look flat and dull, to the smaller range of our monitors and TV sets, which typically use a display standard called Rec. 709. And that is likely to change in the next few years as we adopt HDR screens and sets. The modifications can be done manually using the color management settings of your editor. Using a lookup table simplifies the initial step by converting the log recording to the standard display profile. Although this video is designed primarily to help those with an understanding of these technologies and techniques, I'm starting with the basics to help get everyone up to speed while explaining what those settings and capabilities do. Feel free to skip ahead to the samples using the menu in the description. All of the samples in this video come from original 4K 30 frame 10 bit recordings made on an Atomos Ninja Inferno using the ProRes HQ setting from the Z7. I'd expect the Z6's N log recordings to be similar. Now, although it's pronounced N-Log, that's really a shortened version of the term Nikon logarithmic function. Uh, the function describes a response curve, which enables a sensor to capture a wider dynamic range than possible with a linear response. The N-Log response function looks like this. I'm going to demonstrate how it works using a chart, and then we'll get to look at some real-world examples. Most reflected light scenes, like this chart, have a dynamic range that's about 8 stops, meaning that the brightest area in the scene is 128 times brighter than the darkest. This scene is recorded using the flat color profile. The linear or near-linear response of most sensors has no problem capturing that range. There's a nice distribution of values on the histogram. I've turned on the custom setting G6 highlight alert for 235 and have backed the ISO down one step from that alert. Checking the ninja's waveform, the mid-gray looks slightly high, but other values appear as I'd like for a properly exposed chart image. Nikon requires that N-Log be used in conjunction with an external recorder and with the 10-bit setting turned on. These settings aren't in the video section, they're found in Setup on the HDMI Advanced submenu. Change the output depth to 10-bit, then you can turn N-Log on. I'm also turning Recording Control on, enabling the camera's record control to start and stop the recorder. The View Assist setting activates a LUT for the LCD to better approximate the final image and this does not affect the image sent to the external device. Also best to set the custom setting C3 power off delay standby timer to no limit. Activating N-Log means that picture controls are disabled and the ISO is raised to a minimum of 800. The viewfinder and shutter release for stills are disabled. And switching to N-Log I've not changed the settings but the ISO has increased to 800 and the image has lost contrast which you can see both on the histogram which has additional space on both the left and the right as well as on the waveform where values are now between 15 and 80 percent. The dynamic range of the original image has been reduced in order to make space for the additional stops. Nikon advises that a mid-gray card, the back of my chroma selfie, be set for 35% on a waveform. That means, as the ISO can't go lower, I'm closing the iris a few stops, creating an even flatter waveform with lots of headroom. In Final Cut, the waveform for the non-N-Log image looks exactly as we hoped. The mid-gray is a little high. Use your judgment to lower the mid-tones as required. The N-Log version looks as dull as we expected. If you didn't have the Nikon LUT, you'd have to make some fairly dramatic adjustments to bring this back to anything like its original dynamic range. 
I've downloaded and installed the LUTs. You'll need to follow the specific instructions for your editor. And now the Inspector Settings panel displays both the Z6 and the Z7 versions of the LUT, which maps the footage to Rec. 709. Using the Z7 setting, the image is nearly fully recovered, but is still darker than I'd like. Again, manual adjustments can be made until the scene suits. Now, I've typically complained that using a log profile for an image that doesn't have a dramatic exposure range will reduce the dynamic range of the image, but this high bandwidth 10-bit external recording doesn't seem to have suffered. Now, this is my friend, the DSC Labs Xyla chart, and on this chart, each rectangle represents one stop less in exposure, and it's the best way to demonstrate how many stops of exposure are gained with log profiles. I'll use ISO 800 and a 1 60th shutter for both. With N-Log off, the aperture needs to be closed to F22 to eliminate the highlight alert on the brightest chip. On the external recording, the visible range is 9 stops above the noise floor. Then with N-Log on, the aperture needs to be reduced to F7.1. On the external recording, the range is now 12 stops above the noise floor. Both needed adjustments to align black with zero on a waveform, and it's worth noting that even at ISO 800, Nikon's noise floor is less noisy than most. Let's see if we can take our knowledge and expertise to some real-world scenes. The tests did give me an understanding of how low the exposure should be to be suitable. I'm shooting this scene with the foreground in shadow and the brightly lit sky, using a three-stop ND and a circular polarizer. Uh, starting with N-Log off and with the ISO at 800, F18 is required to eliminate the highlight alert. On the waveform, the blacks are clearly crushed and going below zero. To properly expose the foreground, I have to open the exposure to F4. Now you can see the grass in the shade, but the sky is washed out. On the waveform, white is clearly clipping at 110, so this is a scene that could use another three stops of range. When I switch to N-Log, now with the aperture at f5.6, detail in both the sky and the grass is visible. The waveforms between 15 and 90, checking with the gray card, that's about 25%. Applying the LUT expands the waveform to 100%, but the foreground is a little dark, the sky a little bright. I'm going to remove the LUT and make the adjustments manually using Final Cut's color wheels. Lower the shadow slightly, raise the highlights a bit, and then tune the midtones to suit. Finally, increase the saturation to taste. If I undo those adjustments and reapply the LUT, and then fine tune, I can be a little more detailed than the shadows, but the sky remains slightly washed out. My intent here is to create a natural image. Uh, that would be the starting point for a color grade. Now, do you prefer the LUT with a small adjustment? or my manually graded image, please let me know in the comments. It is difficult to get the exposure right when using log. Neither the histogram nor the Ninja's Rec. 709 display waveform provide accurate guidance to know what the scene will look like when processed, particularly when you're exposing for skin tone. For example, here, a one-stop difference takes me from too bright to too dark. Luckily, the Ninja Inferno does support downloadable lookup tables, and I've installed the Nikon LUTs on the Ninja. Changing from the default Rec. 709 display to the Nikon 7 lookup table shows the scene with the LUT applied. That also applies to the waveform, so now it's very clear when I'm clipping the highlights and I can back off one click for a properly exposed image. So even if I don't find the LUTs valuable for grading, it's very useful for exposure. Please, remember that log recordings are not movie magic. They don't transform your recordings into cinema quality images. They're a tool to be used when the dynamic range of a scene exceeds the capability of the standard dynamic range. A log recording isn't a prerequisite to color grade a scene to create a look to support your creative vision. That can be done from any properly exposed and color accurate recording. In general, the secret of creating a cinematic looking image doesn't involve in-camera settings or color adjustments made while editing.
Lighting, extreme attention to how and where light falls and doesn't fall in your scene, is how cinematic images are created. I hope this helps. If you have questions or comments, I do enjoy interacting with you, so post your relevant questions and civil comments below. I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. Your interest and support is appreciated. And if you're thinking about subscribing, remember that it is free and there's no obligation.